Hi, and welcome to another long-anticipated episode of The History Freak. Today, we're going to discuss Collecting Napoleon, all things you've ever wanted to know from the period 1796 to 1815, that critical era in history. Napoleon wrote in his own autobiographical writings, I was born when Corsica was perishing. 30,000 Frenchmen spewed onto our shores, drowning the throne of liberty in waves of blood. The cries of the dying, the groans of the oppressed, and the tears of despair surrounded the cradle from the hour of my birth. So we're going to be showing you, in the course of this episode of The History Freak, several pieces of ephemera, original autographs and documents and manuscripts of the era, both French and British, in addition to some Russian pieces of ephemera as well. This will go several parts and several episodes into the future, so we hope you enjoy this exciting time of collecting all things Napoleon. Why only have this as part one of a Napoleonic collection, you ask? Well, why not? This could go into several parts and several episodes. So sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. Here we have, professionally framed and matted, an autographed free frank of Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington. Here it is coupled with a National Portrait Gallery print of the famous Anglo-Irish soldier, Tory statesman, and Prime Minister. This wonderful specimen was obtained from Ed Bomsey Autographs in Virginia. Next, we have an exquisite bronze of Napoleon astride a horse. This was obtained from a local antiques dealer near me. Behold, a model of the Hugomont farmhouse this chateau in Belgium is a large farmhouse situated at the base of an escarpment near Waterloo. This is where British and other Allied forces faced regiments of Napoleon's forces on the 18th of June, 1815. And here is a 100th anniversary commemorative book of the HMS Victorious Ship, one of the Royal Navy's outstanding war vessels. The ship saw action, most notably, in the Battle of Pirano in 1812 under Captain John Talbot. Next, we have a fine specimen of a Second Empire military headdress, a Napoleonic Shako. Here we have the pom-pom replaced and a replacement cockade. Enjoy. I'm proud to showcase for you a leather holster for the AN-13 or model 1805 French cavalry pistol used during the Napoleonic Wars. I have my good friends in the UK at Spandau Militaria to thank for this piece. I'm very pleased to showcase here a professionally rebound list of officers. Steele's Navy list shows officers of the Royal Navy alphabetically and according to rank. And what collection would be complete without Mignot-led soldiers in their famous glossy paint purchased personally at Au Plat de Tain in Paris in Saint-Germain neighborhood? Starting off the autographs, we have none other than a beautiful document signed by Jean-Victor Marie Moreau, the French general who helped Napoleon to power but later became a rival and was banished to the United States. This is courtesy of the Red Lancer. And from my good friends at John Wendell Antiquarian Books in San Francisco, a wonderful and extensive handwritten letter signed by Emmanuel de Grouchy, the Marquis de Grouchy. The famous French general rose to the rank of Marshal of the Empire. And it's my pleasure to show you an engraving and signed original document of Lucien Bonaparte, the younger brother of Joseph and Napoleon. He was only 24 when Napoleon seized control of the French government in the year 1799. In a slight departure from autographs, we have some wonderful French Napoleonic uniform buttons, an artillery pouch badge, as well as some crucifixes. These were recovered as part of the Louis Fay collection. Louis Fay lived near the Waterloo Battleground site 
and was a known collector of Napoleonic ephemera. I also have some nicely preserved Russian uniform buttons and a Russian Orthodox cross found on the Napoleonic battlefields of 1812. And last but not least, three lines in Napoleon's hand editing a document. This is courtesy of my friends at John Wendell in San Francisco. This was part of the offering for sale at the American Art Institute auction in 1913 of the Warren Crane Collection. Well, thanks again for joining us for another exciting episode of The History Freak. This will be several parts and several episodes, so look forward to new Napoleonic collection items in the future. And as I always say, stay in the past.